Sign of the times, mess up your mind, hurry up before it's too late, let's fall in love, get married, have a baby, we'll call him Nate, if it's a boy. Welcome back to a door cream videos, it's been a long, long time since my last Prince video, I know I've gotten a little carried away with um videos about historic buildings in Christchurch and all of you people who know me for my talking about prints are probably wondering what in God's name is going on. But I'm back. The reason I've been so quiet is there's just been so little happening in the prints community lately. I mean, we've had all these promises from Warners about Purple Rain Deluxe and um, we had the underwhelming Forever. See, I'm already struggling to remember that's how forgettable it was collection. And, um, but finally... You know, we've still got a couple of months to go before that ominous day. Today it was 10 months ago. It's 21st of February here right now. Um, also coming up on that one year anniversary of um, what I call the greatest concert I've ever seen in my life. I'm um, probably wondering why I'm flashing all this stuff around. Yep, there's a good reason for it all. Um, and Kat, suppose you don't know, today in the UK and New Zealand, this single was released 30 years ago. It was the first taste of what was going to basically be the greatest Prince album ever released. And yes, I'm having a bad hair day at the moment. So the new Adore Cream project, which will be carried over a series of weeks, and will be my sole focus unless, of course, Purple Rain Deluxe seems to be shopped to the stores, which is unlikely. But anyway, we're going to focus on this because, as you might remember, last year I did the 30th anniversary of Parade. And then the 20th, I mean the 10th anniversary of 3121, and now this year I want to do Sign of the Times. Don't worry, I'm not going to do a 10th anniversary video of Planet Earth. Sorry, I just don't think it's quite worth it. With the fuss, but today we're going to talk about Sign of the Times. We're going to talk about a series of videos. This first video is just going to be an introduction generally to the project and what I have. And um, then the next video is going to be about the history of it, how it came about, starting with um, basically the period in late 1985 when Prince had finished with the Under the Cherry Moon parade stuff and decided he wanted to start recording a new album called Dream Factory and um, basically how all the hassle in between it basically he started it, he started recording Madhouse stuff, he started recording with Sheila E and Eric Leeds more than The Revolution then The Revolution fell apart, then there was a Hidden Run tour and then um, the big parade tour of course as we know and then Prince firing The Revolution, um, having a Barney with Warners over the release of the free CD Crystal Ball project and finally, at the start of 87, where Prince was told he had to pare it back down to two albums. And basically, what we got was the Sign of the Times set. And basically, today I'm just going to show you some of my Prince stuff. Um, first of all, I'm going to show you my album. Okay, I've oh, had it on CD for years, but this is only a, main, a modern repressing of the album. Um, it's 180 GSM. I haven't really played it much because I don't trust my record player much. And... Um, so this is what the original cover looks like basically and um, of course there was a big promotional heart it was on the plastic on the outside so I had to cut it out but the promotional heart I mean this is of course 2016 reprint but original ones of these are quite hard to find as they had a habit of sticking it right on the album which wouldn't have been helpful and the album kind of explains Prince's frame of mind when he made the album it's a mishmash of musical styles coming together and it's really really good I think but basically, the album itself actually wasn't actually that big a hit. It only sold about 1.8 million copies in the US and about 2 million copies worldwide. It only got to number 6 on the charts in the US, which seems high, but given Parade had got to number 3 and the previous two albums had both been number 1 smashes, Prince was on his way out for a while, which is a shame with the chart puppet because artistically, this album was his very best and... Um, it's pretty much the reason why 1987 was such a great year for music, because you also had Michael Jackson's Bad, which of course I've already spoken about several times. It's just a perfect album, pretty much, and would be a good competitor with this. And of course, my new buddy George Michael released his seminal Faith album that year. We had um, Introducing the Hardline, according to Terence Trent D'Arby, which had his, probably his best ever songs on it. Oh, okay, 1995's Vibrator comes close, but that was a really good album too. Madonna didn't really do much, but she did put out um, the You Can Dance remix album and also the Who's That Girl soundtrack, which was forgettable, but it had one great song, which is Who's That Girl. And um, yeah, and 87 was just a really good year for music. But anyway, um, so this is the album, basically. Um, now, um, another first thing that happened was these are the inner jackets of the album. 
That's because it was a two record set or two disc set. So this is one here. Now a lot of people have said, oh, this is Prince holding the heart, and that's also what appears on the um, Sign of the Times single cover. It's actually Cat. Prince would never have legs that big and strong. She's got almost the same skin tone as Prince. The person standing in front, though, with the high heels on is almost certainly Prince. And here we are, here's Prince. He was going through his peach and black phase here. And as you can see, um, he just looks like a genius perched on the end of success. I think the glasses are more decoration rather than whether he needed them or not. I think we have to bear in mind too, when Prince recorded this album, he was 27, 28, basically, because he did start recording it in 85. And um, the bulk of it was down on tape by the end of 86, although I think the song, the Sign of the Times itself, actually dates from January 87. Um, this is the singles that came out. The first single was Sign of the Times, which came out in February. I believe it might have come out on February the 18th in the States. So we've got the 7-inch side, 12-inch. 12-inch is the extended mix, and you've got, again... People say, ah, oh, this is Prince. It's not Prince, it's Cat. Honestly, look. Prince does not look that masculine. He actually looks more effeminate. Sorry, I just had to say that. You can see that she's wearing makeup. And it's not the first time Sheila E's dressed up as Prince. I think we've all seen the famous Saints video, which has got a sort of Prince 1984 look. And she seems to have made her lips look even bigger than they do here, where she's basically bopping to the Saints, along to a princess beat. So it's Sheila E having fun. Sheila E was in the group, and now some people are even saying that Prince pretty much proposed to her. Prince was obsessed with Sheila E. Now, Sign of the Times itself was quite a large hit. Got to number three in America, got to top five worldwide. Don't think it went number one anywhere. Um, then the second single we had, I've only got a seven-inch of it, was um, If I Was Your Girlfriend. Which, and this song, even though it's a fan favourite and it is a great song, really threw the buying public, so it was actually a colossal flop. It flopped in the 60s in the chart in America. Did better in Britain and Europe, but still it, the song was a flop basically. It was his first proper flop in years. Um, the other thing I just want to show you quickly um, this is this record. Now, this record design basically, this is the first time they used this special Paisley Park label for the singles. And you see it on all the Sign of the Time singles going right up to the time of Peach in 1993 because in 86 they still had special labels for parade singles and then special ones for the. Um, Around the World in the Day symbols, they were Paisley Park releases, but they had different labels. But this generic label would go right through to 1993. That's the, for the singles, basically the 7 inches. However, the album size singles were different, as I'll show you here. Third single, You Got the Look. After the flop of If I Was Your Girlfriend and also the general flop of the, the European tour, it was good, but Prince decided not to tour it in the States, instead to make the aborted Sign of the Times movie. Um, you Got the Look was rushed out, and unlike... If I Was Your Girlfriend, this song went on to become a massive hit, a number two hit in America. And this is the generic label you saw for the 12-inch singles in the albums, right through, and my fingers aren't on the record, I've just got it on the HDSC, right through to 1993, but it's just a Paisley Park design. And um, this song got to number two, well, the 7-inch did, I'm not so sure about this 12-inch. And um, it was basically Prince's biggest hit since Raspberry Beret, in, I mean, sorry, since Kiss in 1986. And it would be his biggest hit until Bat Dance in 1989. So the song was quite a huge hit. It had Sheena Easton in it. It was very poppy. It's a good song, but I still think it's better on the album. And the final single, which I think only got released in the States, was um, Hot Thing. And um, the top side was I Could Never Take the Place of Your Man. I love this single. I love the photo. The photo is actually quite interesting. It's actually from the parade tour. That was when Prince had his hair like that and he was obsessed with those big clanky necklaces. Now, if you listen to Parade, apparently in the first four songs, halfway through I Wonder You and um, New Precision, you can actually hear these necklaces clanking in the background. But Prince kind of abandoned this look around before the Sign of the Times era. The song actually was a big hit. It got to number 10 on the charts. And it was, some people also saw Hot Thing as an A-side. Again, both of them were basically album sides. And um, later on when I discuss the singles, I mean basically... The first two singles had B-sides, but you got the look in the song, merely used album tracks. And um, besides the album and singles, the joyful thing about Sign of the Times is, I should have prepared for this video better, there was also a movie, the concert movie, which was supposed to be the last concert recorded in, um, I think it was either Rotterdam or Antwerp, somewhere like that. But instead, very little of that coverage got used, and he ended up recording most of it on the new soundstage at Paisley Park. And this is actually the one people go, ah, oh, that's a cheap, bad version. It's not the remastered version, <coughs> but it is a good movie. And um, it only had a limited release, but 
It had a good catch line, basically. If you only go to one concert this year, the Prince movie is the one. But, again, it wasn't that good, popular, because of um, the bad taste left by Under the Cherry Moon. And The shame of it really was that people were kind of losing interest in Prince by 1987. Which is a shame, because this stuff is all brilliant. So, yeah, so that's it. We're going to be doing some Sign of the Times videos. And the first one, which I'll probably upload in about a week or so, will be about the famous um, How the Album Came Together. And um, thanks for watching, thanks for your patience, um, going straight back to Prince now, so we'll be moving away from the whole Canterbury Heritage things for a while, although I will be uploading more videos of that when I go down there in a couple of weeks and I'm going to go and take some photos, but um, at this time we're going to talk about Prince's Sign of the Times, which I consider to be a very important album. Shout outs to all my usual friends, um, Most Beautiful Boy, of course, um, Jay and, and Jay and Nightchild, basically, um, everyone on Prince Orb, everyone at the Peach and Black fan community, the Prince podcast, and now the people who actually work at the MJ podcast, because they're also big Prince fans too, so yeah, thank you, and um, enjoy the videos, sign of the time, mess with your mind.